they were mostly middle-aged men and they scrupulously trawled through absolutely everything that I posted and responded to it and bitched amongst themselves and spread lies about me and really bullied me. Hello, I'm Tom Rogers and this is the Rebel Education Podcast. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Rebel Education Podcast. I'm Tom Rogers at Rogers History. If you want to follow me on Twitter or if you want to follow the podcast, we're now available on Spotify, iTunes and Podbean. This episode teaches on social media abuse, snobbery and a whole lot more. What is happening on social media with teachers? Lots and lots of joining different networks, especially Twitter and Facebook. And the more and more teachers who join, especially on a public network like Twitter, the more and more teachers expose themselves to different threats to their own professional integrity, but also their place within the profession. I want to start really by talking about what's really inspired this podcast. What is what has inspired this podcast for me? And in all honesty, it's been um, since I've joined Twitter, I joined Twitter three years ago. Um, and now three years on, um, you know, I've written, I think, more than 100 blogs for the TES and I've got more than 17,000 Twitter followers. Over that three years, I've both experienced and witnessed a lot of behavior, a lot of different things happening on Twitter that I would describe as unprofessional. My personal view would be it's unprofessional. Um. However, I I do believe that the lines between social media and teachers in the classroom perhaps haven't been properly drawn out, um, whether in the teacher standards, whether in some kind of charter. And I'll come on to that later is perhaps solutions to some of these problems. But what is the issue, I think, is that I'm talking about here? Well, let me start with my experience. I've Uh, When I first joined, that was 2015, within two weeks I wrote my first blog and really I was writing a blog to share ideas. I was quite enthusiastic, I wanted people to know what I was doing and also I wanted people to comment on what I was doing so then I could maybe tweak it or improve it. I wanted to get ideas from other people. That was the main reason I joined Twitter originally and this was way before I wrote any blogs for the TES. This was way before I expressed any opinions about education. This was just purely going on there to share ideas about teaching and learning in the history classroom because I'm a history teacher. And the first blog I published involved some role play in it and I distinctly remember um, one very high profile teacher tweeter um, kind of tweeted out very dismissively. It's one for the for the, I can't even remember what he said, one for the stupid rubbish idea file. Um, It was something along those lines. And and I was quite shocked because I thought, you know, it's the first blog I've ever shared. I I don't have many followers. I'm just on here for, for, you know, for for fun really at that point. And, you know, to have your ideas attacked. and, And I've seen it a million times since then. Not necessarily to me. Because I I wouldn't say I share prolifically teaching and learning ideas. I do sometimes and I share other people's, but of my own. I'm not a prolific sharer. Um, But certainly there are those that are. And I've seen their ideas getting lambasted uh, in different ways. People telling them their idea is rubbish. People telling them their idea doesn't work. People telling them that their idea doesn't match with educational research. Some of the things may be true, but it's the tone and it's the manner and it's the way in which we conduct ourselves as teachers and between ourselves as teachers that's what I'm getting at it's not necessarily the the debates or the different opinions people have because I think you know um, we need to be as liberal as possible with uh, with with really expanding the debate about teaching and learning because I think the more we do that the better we can all get as professionals but I'm talking about the tone I'm talking about when you bring down the tone when it's passive aggressive or when it's dismissive 
So I've seen a lot of that, not just for me. That that one tweet for me in 2015 is just an example. Since then, on a personal level, I've had people question my upbringing. I've been called a weasel by, again, another very high-profile teacher blogger. Recently, I had an anonymous account set up which swore at me um, and made many abusive comments in several different tweets. And then that account was deleted by whoever set it up within days. Um, I believe that my account has been targeted. I, I hate the word targeted because it's such a, a grand word, but, you know, but I've experienced groups, clusters of teachers who've maybe gone after, um, repetitively gone after different, different tweets or, or whatever that I've, that I've put out there or blogs. Um, and again, this is perception, you know, someone else might see it completely differently. I've had a whole lot of positive feedback too, um, that's been amazing. You know, I've, I have people regularly telling, you know, um, direct messaging me or commenting and it's brilliant that you're, that I feel I'm supporting people, helping people, making people think, you know, all that stuff. But I'm just talking about that, that, that 1%, maybe 2% that, that, that's difficult, you know, and I, I know other people find it difficult. Um, I accept as a blogger and tweeter, views should be challenged and questioned. But as I say, it's sometimes that the tone, uh, the sniping. Um, and stuff like this can affect you. I've had to develop quite a thick skin. I know others the same. I've had to take time to reflect before responding to comments. I've had to learn to ignore different comments. Um, but, you know, but also I hold my own behaviour. You know, my expectations on my own behaviour are pretty high. I would be distraught if I behaved in some of the ways I've seen online um if you let social media get on top of you it's like anything else then it will consume you and sometimes you have to take a step back and say this is actually a blue bird uh with with some numbers next to it and it you know it's a keyboard and so on and really try and see this perspective on it recently on social media i've seen teachers name calling each other i've seen them making med negative statements about each other publicly calling each other things making assertions about character in public via Twitter, via Facebook, swearing at each other. I've seen that three or four times. People actually saying, you are this. And, sw and saying, you know, using swear words, not a comment about work they produced or an idea, actually the person. Uh, it could be based on what they've shared, but it's aimed at the person. Uh, I've seen arguments going back and forth with aggressive language used, you know, dismissive language, passive aggressive tone. That's the climate. That is the climate, especially on this thing called Edu Twitter. Um, and you know that that is that is happening. That is there, and it's happening more and more. I think as more and more people join it, and the profiles of some teachers grow on there. I I do believe that 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 everyone has that thing to deal with. Um, to one level or another. It depends, of course, what you share. The more opinions you share, the more knockbacks you get on the opinions and potentially the more arguments you get into. And if the people there are not courteous and polite, then it can be a difficult situation for that person. Personally, I believe teachers are role models. I believe that teachers should model good behaviour, both online and offline. Um, I found it very worrying that um, some schools preach that everyone should be courteous and polite. And then when it comes to social media, their staff are not courteous and polite. Um, I don't know whether there's policies or, or buy-ins in place on that, but that's the observation I've made. And it's frustrating. Uh, do we need a social media charter? Do we need teacher-to-teacher uh, -teacher social media interactions to be within the teacher standards? I think we will. I think we're going to need a huge raft of training for teachers, on the use of social media, what can happen, what to deal with, what they might have to deal with um, on social media to prepare teachers who want to take that leap. And of course, it's a very positive thing to want to share your resources, your ideas, to engage in the, with, with other professionals in a way that's very unique because how often do you get to go and spend time with thousands of other teachers in, in a space? You don't have the time and Twitter is a very easy way of doing that. Facebook as well. Um, it's a world that's not going away. It's only going to get bigger and bigger. So how can we make it better? 
Um, and that's really a key question for this podcast. I've already suggested a couple of ideas of my own, but I want to hear from three other contributors to this podcast, and I really appreciate them coming on. They've made a fantastic contribution to the podcast. The first one is David Keats, who's a year four teacher. Um, he's in the English leadership team in his school. He's also a prominent education blogger and tweeter. He's going to talk first about his own personal experience um, of what's happened since he's joined Twitter as a, which is, I think, in the last 12 months. And he's going to talk very candidly about that. I'm also delighted to have Natasha Devon on the podcast. I met Natasha at a TES debate that we were both attending back in April. Delighted to meet her. And she's agreed to contribute to this podcast. She's a campaigner, author. Uh, she's a, the founder of the Mental Health Media Charter. And she has some very strong views on on this and what we should be doing. And also, I'm delighted to say that um, two weeks ago, I was in Germany, in Cologne, for Practical Pedagogies, which is a big teacher conference. And after one of the events, I had the chance to chat with Ross McGill, um, the founder of Teacher Toolkit, um, about uh, social media, but particularly focusing on what we can do to make things better. So here's the three contributions from these people, and then we'll round it back up at the end of the podcast. So my name's David Keat. I can be found on Twitter at Mr. Underscore K underscore teacher. I was really interested when Tom um, approached me and said that he'd like me to have a chat about some issues that I've seen on Twitter recently, particularly with regards to uh, people being less than kind to one another. It's something that I'd say I have experienced myself lately. I... I'm reluctant or perhaps loathed to use the word trolling because I think it sounds uh, slightly juvenile in a way. But I can certainly think I can certainly say that some of the behaviour I received was along these lines. Now, I must say I consider myself quite a thick skinned individual. I, I'm of the opinion that um, that there will be some negative comments online. I don't think there needs to be whatsoever, but I perhaps am, am in a position where I'm OK with taking a little bit of that. I, um, I've i been fairly active on Twitter for, I would say, six or seven months now. And in terms of my, um, my profile, my follower growth, that has happened very, very quickly. And I think in the last month or two, I've really begun to notice, or I really did begin to notice, um, more and more negativity cropping up with regards to the tweets I was putting out. Um, perhaps when I was commenting on things, people were people were picking apart my comments a little, a little more sort of... Um, uh, I, I, perhaps a little more, more spitefully, or a little more, a bit more critically than um, than I'd been noticing before. A trend was starting to develop with me. I could see that it was the same uh, small group of people doing it over and over again. And whilst I'm um, as I say, very open to open to different views, different opinions, I'm open to um, people challenging my point of view. I was beginning to notice that some of this um, some of this criticism and some of these comments were were sneaking into the sort of spiteful territory. They were becoming a little bit more angled and I felt a, an agenda was beginning to develop. Now I was approached by quite a few people myself at this time and we're talking only two or three weeks ago. I was approached by quite a few people saying, are you okay? We've noticed that these this same group keep uh, keep making comments to yourself and, and other people had started to um, to almost um, sarcastically mock some of the things I was doing. I remember recently I um, I do quite a few book gives, giveaways and I, I posted a, a book giveaway, a book of my own that I was open to giving away. I posted that saying retweet, uh, like, comment and follow. Um, for me, I'd done a book giveaway without asking people to follow and um, and I'd had quite a lot of difficulty actually getting the postal address of, of the person that had won the competition because we weren't uh, following each other on Twitter. But what I found was on the back of this, quite a few sarcastic comments about me trying to gain followers. I saw quite a few people setting up uh, uh, sarcastic threads saying things like, oh, if you get me to... Um, if if you follow me, if 100 people follow me, whatever, or it, well, it might not have been specifically that, but if X amount of people follow me, I'll paint something on a room in my house. Just very sarcastic, very uh, silly comments, but I felt there was a bit of an agenda there. Now, some fairly high-profile people on Twitter decided to, um, I guess, come to my defence. We had the likes of um, Chris Dyson, Simon Smith, amongst others, some some really high-profile characters and really like influential characters saying, um, essentially enough is enough they'd, they'd noticed that I was on the receiving end of 
a little bit of criticism and uh, and they spoke out, which was something I, I really appreciated at the time. I tended to keep quiet about this situation. I was um, I was reluctant to to get into any spats about it. So there was a day or two of um, very regular um, comments about myself. A lot of people defending me and being very positive, which was lovely. And uh, on the back of this, I decided to write a blog, which um, it was seen by about a thousand people over the first 24 hours, which for me was quite astounding but a blog called when banter isn't banter which uh, you can find on my page um i if you look at my twitter account um so that for me was a sort of personal experience i'd had lately i must say since the issue was was brought up a few weeks ago my twitter experience has been uh incredibly positive i think people have or the certainly the group of people that were being sarcastic and uh, a little bit spiteful have backed down uh i think there's a little bit of unfollowing which has taken place which for me is a shame but fine and um, my twitter experience and online experience has been slightly better since then uh, second question tom asked me was um what was he saying? Uh, what's wrong with teacher behaviour on social media? Now, I think Twitter in particular is fantastic for um, for for teachers. Really, a real range of teachers. I think what it does is bring people together. It eliminates some of those sort of hierarchical um, levels that people have within schools. I've made brilliant friends and brilliant connections amongst people who are like executive head teachers, head teachers, uh, people involved in academy trusts, NQTs, um, RQTs, uh, middle leaders, secondary school teachers, key stage one teachers. I've found that there's an ability to network and communicate, share ideas with so many people, which is absolutely fantastic. And in terms of sort of social media teaching, I think Twitter brings a little bit more to the table than the, my experience with Facebook social media. So I've really enjoyed that. In terms of what's wrong with it, I would say um, people taking things a little bit too far. It's absolutely fine to have different opinions. There's no problem with that whatsoever. That's part of life, and it would be boring if everyone was the same. But what I have noticed is people people getting personal, people really digging deeper into the into the individual who has a different opinion to them. And perhaps instead of just sort of agreeing to disagree on occasion, it has become... Um, you know, it has become deeper, more spiteful, more more measured, and you've you've got um, you've got quite nasty situations which have evolved on the back of it. This is a very small scale, and um, this is a very um, uh, small percentage of individuals on Twitter and on um, teaching social media that do this. But when they do do it, it does tend to have a big sort of splash effect. I think you see a lot of people who are perhaps less confident individuals in real life who come to. Um, come to twitter to to share ideas to pick up ideas to perhaps get out of their school bubble and when they see some of these um often quite high profile and into into uh, sorry about that high profile and um sort of influential characters disagreeing quite personally and quite um quite harshly i think that can have a quite a strong impact on young and new teachers especially so as i say lots and lots of good that comes from online twitter online teaching um, teaching discussions but the disagreements do tend to or do have a a knack of straying into the personal and i often wonder whether those people that do this and um, partake in these sort of conversations would act very differently if they weren't hiding or sitting behind a computer screen i think it would be nice if people could think a little bit more before they do things and think of the uh, the effect it can have. It's been absolutely lovely to have an opportunity to um, be on Tom's podcast. I love listening to it myself. And, um, yeah, that's my, my take. So you can find me on Twitter at uh, Mr underscore K underscore teacher. Thank you. Bye. When I was made the government's mental health champion back in 2015, I was blissfully unaware that the traditional versus progressive education movements were still relevant. I vaguely remembered my teachers making reference to them back when I was at school, but that was a long time ago. And because I have controversial opinions like well-being is important and being 
good at dance or drama or sport or art or music is a valid form of intelligence in the same way as being good at sciences. I was held up as something of a poster girl for the progressive movement, which meant, of course, I was attacked by the trads. And I couldn't believe that people who were holding themselves up as supposedly role models for a generation thought that it was okay to behave this way online. They were mostly middle-aged men and they scrupulously trawled through absolutely everything that I posted and responded to it and bitched amongst themselves and spread lies about me and really bullied me in a way that if we saw that amongst pupils, we would intervene and we would conduct some kind of restorative justice. So I guess, you know, when it comes to the way that teachers behave online, I would like to see them practice what they preach. I'm not saying that I have been... Um, completely blameless in this regard. I did famously call the government's behaviour czar a bellend, um, not to his face, I didn't tag him in it, and in fairness, he had said some fairly bellendy statements. Uh, but in retrospect, that probably wasn't the most mature thing to do, and I should have found a different way to express myself, but at least I acknowledged that. I didn't double down on the comment, and uh, I apologised in the way that I would expect a teenager to do if they were guilty of that kind of behaviour. <laughs> um, so that, that's what I would like to see, as role modelling the behaviour that we would like to see in young people. Hi, I'm here with Ross McGill, just after Practical Pedagogies, just talking about um, teachers using um, social media. And obviously there's a lot more teachers now taking advantage of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. They might be using it as a professional account, or you might be using it as a personal account, um, and it may be unlocked. It may be a public account, but it may not be. Uh, and, uh, well, I guess it's what you want to use it for. Um, you know, I've been tweeting for 10 years since Twitter first got established. I started as a personal account at Ross McGill. Um, I soon discovered after a couple of years of tweeting uh, and, you know, going through all the learning hurdles of what's a hashtag, how do I reply to someone, how do I follow someone and see their tweets or not if I don't follow them, what, um, how do I engage with a conference through a hashtag. I mean, 10 years later, it's quite commonplace. There's lots of tutorials, but... Um, in 2008, you know, I could argue it was an early adopter. You don't, you, no one really knew what it was for and how it was being used. But um, I, I realised that I was tweeting about beer or football and then I was in the classroom and I was tweeting a resource or a picture of some kids. And as a school leader, um, I had my own safeguard and alarm uh, ringing away. And, and, you know, one tip for everyone out there is, you know, how do you distinguish between your personal or professional identity? Yeah. You know, if, if an employer is scouring through Google or typing in your name and then looking on Twitter, Definitely. are they seeing photos of a beer and then the next tweet there's pictures of kids in your classroom? You know, the whole safeguarding policy or e-safety policy in your school, what is it? You know, the whole copyright issue I can go into as well. But um, uh, one top tip, I guess, is separate the professional to the personal. Yeah. Um, so mine is teacher toolkit, purely teaching content. My personal is at Ross McGill. I mean, an interesting, an interesting thing that people often discuss is how powerful Twitter in particular can be for CPD. I know for me, it's been fantastic. You know, I've learned so much from being on it. Um, what are the pitfalls, though, do you think, with using something like Twitter as a teacher? Um, we talk about trolling, stuff like that. I mean, are there any pitfalls for a teacher on Twitter? Certainly, speaking from myself, I can say, yeah, there definitely are. But look, everyone's got an opinion, and, and not everyone's going to like you or like what you say, but let's remember, if we're not face-to-face -face having a conversation where we could get through a lot more content in a face-to-face -face conversation in a minute compared to reading a tweet or me lurking behind the scenes and reading what Ross says to Tom, yeah. and how I interpret that word or how you've typed it next to a semicolon or a hyphen or a capital letter, yeah. my interpretation or connotation of what you say will be totally different to how you might say it face-to-face. -face. Absolutely. So two or three years ago, I committed to myself having received several... Uh, 
anonymous accounts and trolls and all sorts of things, I thought, right, I'll, put, I'll be brave enough and put out a few videos. So at least people, if they never met me, could hear and, and observe how I would say certain things. Yeah. And that's a really good tip. And uh, uh, with the likes of live Instagram stories and live periscopes, um, you know, if you're brave enough, it's a really good tip from me. If you've got an audience or you're perhaps talking about something that might be viewed controversial, that's probably a good way to approach it, which might reduce the number of criticisms you might receive through people tweeting or, or sharing messages. I think it's super important that teachers can, can actually share those opinions because I think, you know, if you've got an opinion about teaching and learning or whatever, some kind of professional idea, maybe it's a body, a public body like Ofsted, I think it's important that you, you can share that idea publicly, in a public domain, but you have to be able to handle the criticism that comes with putting that out there. So, so what, what's the tip for somebody who's going to go on there and thinks, I'm going to write a blog. They really want to write a blog. They're really good at writing, really good at blogging. They've got a particular idea that, that may be controversial or um, a lot of people may not agree with. How, how do you deal with people who don't like your content? Well, let, let, let's just be frank. Everyone's got an opinion. Not, no one in the world knows the answer. Absolutely. The Not in teaching and learning. The nature of teaching is there's no one way. Exactly. And we can all express what works in my classroom. You just look at research, Professor Becky Allen, Dr. Sam Sims, their book, The Teacher Gap. T Teacher Gap. You get after three or four years of experience, you reach your optimum performance. Then also you calculate so many idiosyncratic decisions in your internal database that they become valid. I mean, how Roberts today talked about Billy in the classroom. He didn't leave the classroom. Why? Because... Howell had engaged him in this lesson. That's valid data, but it can't be measured by external forces. But that's then an important thing that Howell will take as a teacher to then evaluate what he would do in his next lesson. Yeah. That not, might not match what I read or interpret from your blog or what I might view as a effective or a measure of success if I popped into your classroom for 10 minutes. Um, so, it, for me, my top tip is trust your gut. Teachers need to experiment. They need Definitely. to take risks. They need to be in a, an environment where the, the culture can be created to allow me but to what's the benefit? Of, what's the benefit of social media then for a teacher? Well, the, the benefit of social media ultimately is I, I can tweet out an idea and I can have it while I'm half asleep. A teacher in Australia can reply to me with an answer or a signpost or a solution or have you tried this or why don't you talk to Tom about X, Y, Z? That, that's the beauty of it. And, yeah. and if I'm in a school in the middle of nowhere where I'm isolated and I don't know if what I'm doing is right or my line manager won't yeah. support me, I can suddenly connect with anyone and everyone around the world, and that's the beauty of it. Because it must be said with Twitter in particular, from my experience, you, you do get, you do feel like you're ahead of the game a little bit. Well, I, my, I do, because research, the idea is on there. So my research, you know, I've been using Twitter 10 years now. Um, I've always believed there's about maybe 10% of the yeah. population, the teaching profession in England. So you could argue maybe 100,000 people accounts that are using social media. So my research at Cambridge looking at how social media is an influence in education policy, but also promoting teacher professionalism or teacher voice, um, how it influences policy. But um, my travels the last 12 months in schools across the UK, if I'm asking a group of teachers in a school how many are using Twitter, or Instagram, Pinterest for, social, uh, for professional reasons, the hands are always 5-10% of the audience. Um, if I go to a conference such as Practical Pedagogies, then of course the, 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 the hands are much higher. Why? Because most people have probably found, found the event through social channels. Um, and you'll probably find that very few people come through it through an email database or word of mouth. Um, so there's, it's, just, it's a, just a different niche. Definitely. It's a different community. Definitely. And my, my top tip for anyone listening is um, find your... There's a tribe for everyone. Find your niche. You know, if I'm an early years teacher but I'm really passionate about geography teaching then I, I guarantee if you create a blog or a Twitter account purely about this content, you'll yeah. create your own little community where you yeah. can share and, share and care. Um, that'll be my top tip. Yeah. Thanks so much to all three of the contributors, David, Natasha and Ross, for this podcast. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking about this issue. I think enjoyed might be the wrong word. It's sad that this issue has to be discussed. Um, the conduct of teacher to teacher in, in, on, in, any, in any place, in the workplace, on social media. But I feel it's a growing issue. It's an emerging issue. It's a growing concern. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. If you want to offer any thoughts of your own, please get in touch with me at Rogers History on Twitter. Um, you can follow the Rebel Education podcast on iTunes, Spotify and Podbean or you can visit my website which is rogershistory.com and just go to the tab the Rebel Education Podcast. We'll be back next Thursday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.